switcheroo if anybody would like to pet our Yes, no, they are awesome. Oh my gosh, this is really nice. Yeah, that one is okay. Can everyone reach? Can you reach in there? Better? So, um, you guys can pet her just along this way, along her scales, only on her back, okay? Blue Ivy is a super sweet individual, yeah. but can all animals with a mouth have the ability to bite. Can you reach her, bud? Do I I think while she's back there, we can't, he can't, but. She's not around. Yeah, you can't reach anyone here under the light. Here, um. I'm kind of shedding. They don't skit, shed all together? No. I had, to, I had to take her bigger one because um, it was too heavy. But um, she's not going to be in here much longer. Or... This guy would definitely be a better pet than the just five lines that I catch in the back. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, blue tongue skinks can be great pets. They do have very, very specific requirements when it comes to their diet. They are omnivores. And they also get quite large. Like you can see, Blue Ivy is a pretty large individual. Um, and a lot of people, unfortunately, will buy lizards from pet stores without doing any research and not realize that in a couple of years they will be several feet long. Yes. My cat goes through much. Oz and Xander stay for the Yes, right there. There's some cups right on the back there. Yep. Yeah, I you know that. Yeah, I you know Okay, I can always come out to you. Where are you? I'm going to be here. Jill, I'm here and you're fine. I think you're walking as well. I'm like, that's impossible. Oh, you want my own? Of course, those last couple are here. Okay. And you've been separately. So yeah, they have a very, very slow metabolism. Most times sloths will spend their entire lives in one tree. It takes okay, just as long to finish eating as well. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I got some photos in a little bit for you. So, Sinaza Linnaeus is two toed sloth. There are six species of sloth um, two, 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 two toed and four three toed. Um, and it is determined by how many toes that they have on their front limbs. Um, so, his hind limbs will have three toes. Oh, you gotta so, he, yeah. so, he's a two toed? Yes, he's a two toed. Um, sometimes in the wild, um, oh. here, I can actually, do you want to look at this? Um, will appear green. That's because they move so slowly, um, that algae will actually grow on them because of how humid their climate okay. is. I'll drop it again, buddy. Is it coarse or soft? It's pretty coarse. Yeah, it looks, it looks coarse. But I didn't expect the kangaroo to be soft, so <laughs> He's still pretty young. Um, he's about two years old, um, so he'll be sexually mature for the next couple of years. Now I've got something to get. I've got something to get. Um, he came from a, I don't remember where the facility was, but they had a couple of sloth. One was an orphan. Um, I think this guy's mom was rescued from the lab, but he did, um, oftentimes like, a, yes, a couple days he was in this to me, who was like, um, like reaching for me, like wanting to climb onto me, and obviously we don't want to do that. But when he was younger, he would do that to Jordan as well, and make baby noises, which are like little squeaks and turns. Um, he's very cute. Yeah, he's very cute. He just wants to hang with me. Unfortunately, I can't let him do that, as cute as it would be. Um, typically during the day, he stays in that nest. Um, he won't come out until nighttime. Um, so even in encounters, he's not really going to leave that. Sometimes if he's real extra hungry in the morning, he'll follow me. Um, They're clean in here. Yeah. <laughs> what is the mist for? Um, that's a humidifier. It helps keep the humidity up in here for him. Not that it's humid enough. I'm surprised it's not more poopy. Yeah, they they typically only defecate um, 
a couple yes. times a week. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, and I believe it was noted in his vlogs that he pooped two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a sweetie. I love the way that the red light looks in the, in the photos on him. <laughs> they have a pretty good sense of smell, so similar with the use of that mucusy nostril. They get up high so when they pee it can go. Oh, Does anyone have any questions about getting high from? Uh, um, just to Off exhibit in quarantine a little bit, but she's super sweet. She'll be in our show. She's an imprint, so. Fernando and Stella. Fernando's the oldest bird we have here at the North Florida Wildlife Center. He's 29 years old. As you can see, they have a nest right here against this tree. We actually recently broke it down. It was like a foot and a half higher. That's the territorial call they're doing, saying that like this is our space. You know, stay off our <laughs> territory. Um, but that's their nest. You can tell the difference between Fernando and Stella because Stella has the little clips on her legs, the little bands, and Fernando does not. Also, Fernando is slightly bigger. Okay. So are these are these uh, European storks? Yes, European white storks. Okay. okay. They're monogamous birds, so they mate for life, and they're going to be together for the rest of their lives. And they are also migratory birds. 
So they spend the winter in the tropical parts of Africa and Asia, Asia, and then they spend the summer in Europe. Because they are the birds in the the tales about storks delivering babies. That's what they're referencing. But they're carnivorous. They wouldn't eat a baby. But it's, yeah, it's just a funny. Large for them to have. Um, in Europe, they're often considered a nuisance because they tend to build their nests against chimneys, and for that reason, they used to be killed fairly often because they were a nuisance. Do these breed? Yes, they actually had eggs. They had laid three eggs, but they were all infertile this year. This is their second year trying to mm -hmm. have chicks, but it was unsuccessful. Okay. Which is common in the first couple of years. Oh, they're young? No, they're not young birds. Just, Fernando is 29. Oh, right. You said that. Yeah. <clears throat> they're just inexperienced. Yeah, they're just a newer couple. Mm. I might have missed this, but do they come back to the same place year after year? Oh, same they place? never leave here. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I heard you say they migrate. Well, yeah, the birds wild. in the wild, they would migrate. Okay. They stay here. Gotcha. They could technically leave if they wanted to, but their wings are clipped, so they wouldn't get very far. Yeah. Okay. We did not clip them. They came to us clipped. We wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And they kind of use that <laughs> as a spear. Trust me, it hurts. I would know. <laughs> so. so they feed them chicks, huh? Yes. A lot of the predatory birds here get chicks. Yeah, they would definitely eat baby birds out in the wild. That's actually very common for many predatory birds. Oh, fun fact is that they defecate on their own legs to help them stay cool. Ah. Yeah, that is a fun <laughs> fact. I didn't just know that. Is. Vultures. So when it gets hot later on, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> That's the secret. That's the secret we've been missing here in Florida. Yeah. We all need storks. Call them days at Disney. <laughs> so, she's very picky. Just, we call that fish. <laughs> He's not even sure. He's thinking about it. So, like, you <laughs> like this stuff? Okay. How about this blob? It's like he's waiting for her to be okay, but yeah. They're actually more so scavengers than a lot of other storks, hence the, the bald head. Um, and they are commonly known as the undertaker birds because of how they look from behind. Um, cool. <laughs> they have massive wingspans because they will bake for food. Now this is a male and a female. The female is a little bit closer to us. The male is further back. How do you put it different? Um, size from right here, but they also have different colored bands on different legs, so. 
once you get to know, I mean, I only know the characters on the but once you get to know animals too, their faces all start looking different. <laughs> Um, our little pond system here, we are going to continue it. Yeah, that's what we've been working on. Um, so we're going to continue it that way and have some new exhibits hopefully in the next few months. So we're excited for that. Alrighty, guys. We'll let these
This is Raja. She's this our announcement. Those little noises he's making is like tells you that he's oh, nervous. But they are found in the US. Yes. yes. <laughs> he may look from some different That's just the way their head is shaped. Could you see his head though? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, I see him. He does have the yellow one. She wants to stay in that corner. She's very shy. Okay, I, see I see its butt. That's it. <laughs> Oops, sorry. It's on your tiptoes there. You see. Yeah. She usually will sit up on that perch and show, you know, show off her wing. She eats like rats. Her favorite thing is rats. We don't get them very often. But when we do, she like, goes crazy over them. But she'll eat baby chicks, brown meat, anything really. Is our Mondrakers hornbill. He'll probably hop up right here next to the little netting. He likes to grab things and bring them over. And then he came to us. They're excellent. His species specifically are excellent flyers and they're extremely agile. We're able to like throw little food at him and he'll be able to catch it out of the air. Yeah. We would love to get Zulu a male. He would love a male. I mean, a female to be mated with. The bill looks so big, but when it turns its head, you can see it's really And they are sexually dimorphic, so Zulu, he has a red bill, but a female would have a black bill. Yeah. Well, it was a pet. Yeah. And this species actually tends to follow dwarf mongoose packs in the wild and they'll eat the insects that the mongoose scare away. Hi. Yes. Hi. And then the crested guinea Look, fowl, it wants to be we call them like scratched. nature's alarm it's, system. They are extremely loud when like they get going so they'll warn any prey around in the wild if there's predators nearby. Mm. Yes, and they'll chase you to the door. Yeah. My friend has kids at her farm, and they greet me every time and run after me to the door. <laughs> Not to attack me, I think they want to. Has anybody food, seen a fruit bat yet? No. The fruit bats will be like towards the ceiling, they'll probably be a little yeah. hidden. Yeah. So what is um, Mainly fruit. A lot of fruit, and we have something called a parrot pellet that has a lot of nutrients in it. But yeah, it's a lot of fruit. We go through a lot of fruit <laughs> throughout the day. I bet they like food. This is Matilda, by the way. She's our white bird hornbill. She's carnivorous. She eats snakes and small reptiles. And then they're, they used to be like a lot more common in Europe, but they're not anymore in, because of the cultivated land in Europe and agricultural uses, so they're a lot less common and not really found there anymore. Females only lay about one egg each year and they incubate it for 45 days. And she does not lay any eggs. She does not have a mate, but she's cool. Are they? Yeah. So that picture on the sign is actually hers. A photographer from National Geographic took that photo. I like it because you can see her little individual eyelashes. Where did all the animals come from? Um, they here? They're all rescues. They come from numerous <coughs> wildlife organizations and reservations. Some of them were pets. Not many, but some of them were pets. I'm interested. 
Yes, yeah, she likes the attention. <laughs> Like, so you don't actively seek these uh, creatures, they, they come to you yeah. because they have a need. Yes. Yeah. Most of them are just less eaters. Mm -hmm. Matilda is omnivorous, so she eats meat and fruit. Yeah. She's found in Central Africa and maybe most of the world is forest. And she is actually the only one of her kind in the U.S. right now. Can you see them through the fence? Okay. Okay. I'm really trying to get them to breathe. There's like a bowl of mud kind of on the ground right now because they're supposed to. Oh, they yeah, they yeah. close it off completely. But they have not shown any interest. Yes, he does that. He loves to bring things. He won't give it to you, but he'll like bring it to you and like show it to you. He's a little show off. So, so. are the are the like former pets mm -hmm. interact with them at all? Because this, this guy seems like he's really like <coughs> wants to do something. It wants to have his head scratch. Is what it looks like to me. I mean, we do like when we go in and out, yeah. we'll interact, but only certain birds and animals here do the encounters. Oh right, right. Yeah, but Zulu, I don't trust him to not fly away. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, he loves to interact this way. Like he's, he's just thrilled whenever people are around. Okay, and then also these guys, they have extremely loud vocalizations. They can be heard from over a mile away. Pouched wreath hornbills. <coughs> this is Seize yeah. and Taruk. Um, Seize is the one with the blue pouch, and Taruk's the one with the yellow pouch. Yeah. They are a couple. <laughs> they are actually separated, and when we knew that they were ready to be together, Taruk had started pushing food through the wall to give the seize because a mated pair, uh -huh. the male feeds the female. So they'll hop around like that. They don't really, they'll try to hop around most of the time just to save energy. <coughs> so when they're born, both males and females have that yellow pouch you see, but as they develop, the female's pouch turns gradually more blue. <coughs> Yeah, we have a lot of them. I heard the cows are so cool, so 
Hoping some for some more fruit? Huh? Some more fruit? Yeah. When are the next people coming to feed us? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Is that your friend over there? What was your buddy? What's Elliot signed up for? I got it, I'm sure. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. <laughs> now he's posing for you. <laughs> All righty. So, you had a special request to feed Taruk, right? Yeah. Good, because he is a food hog and he will eat all of it. <laughs> the best there buddy's then. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's it. Yes, I know. It happens really quick. So, birds, as you might know, do not weigh very much at all. So, they do not eat very much either. So, in order for us to continue to do these encounters, we can only give them a certain amount <coughs> per time. However, Sesay and Taruk are very social and they do enjoy just being around people as well. <coughs> yes, my goodness, bud. <laughs> okay, you want to swap bowls? Or yeah, not? I was going to say, you want to get the next one? Yep. Awesome, awesome. There you go. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. Oh, Donated to us. He is 190 pounds. I'm not sure the bar is going on. Okay. Yeah. 
This one over here is sitting nice and handsome. That is Sokka. This one running around like a madman. No, 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 no. Let's not let him climb on us. If your bowls are empty, we can go ahead and put them in the bucket. Oh, come back, get 
Lovely, lovely. He Hold on, buddy. This is like going no. Did you get to touch it? I was just, yes. I was just to say, you guys can pet them if you want. Their favorite spots are going to be on the armpit. They'll lift their arm up for you and on the on the base of their tail. Get those armpit scratches, Elliot. Huh? Don't be discouraged if the lemurs run away from you. They're just double checking that all the food is gone. Yeah. Maybe a little bit gentler, buddy. They like a they like soft pets like this, okay? Oh. He's going to the bowl. Yeah, yeah I know, they're shedding like crazy. Hi, buddy. I'm sorry guys, we have to find me. So until they're done making their call, which they have not done yet, that was not the call. Um, we're just gonna let them, when they are making that noise, we're gonna let them be because, not because they're gonna hurt you, but because if you interrupt them, they will go longer and longer and longer until they feel that they have finished the call. Are you gonna do it or not? He just is being impatient about his treats. <laughs> Get him right here on the neck. That's his favorite spot right there. Okay, so, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so this one is Sokka. He loves cats. So you might want to lick your guys' hats a little bit. But Sokka's name means cat because he acts a lot like a house cat. He's very sweet. Buddy, you guys are helping reforestation in Madagascar uh, through green again. Mm -mm, no, so um, now this is in no way a a scientific fact or anything, but I always say that the ringtail lemurs are very stinky, but they're very quiet. Mm. And these guys um, are less so stinky and very loud. So they kind of um, communicate in different ways. Uh, the All species of lemur communicate with scent and with sound because they're very social animals. But the ring-tailed lemurs especially are scent marking 24-7 and we can even smell it. Yeah, how, well, how about barking uh, or sound, sounds that they make or, or, I'm sorry, sounds that combined with certain movements of certain, you know, stereotype movements? Yeah, like absolutely. One, when it was getting going, it was like rubbing its face. Yeah, catch on things. Uh, um, if they do make their call, I don't know if they are going to do it. They do this very interesting thing with their tail Well, they're kind of whip it back and forth like that that's totally behavioral along with that call but um they have a lot of different noises not so much um and can i get a raise of hands who is doing our giant anteater encounter okay awesome wow. so boomy is sleeping at the moment but he should wake up here in a second now that he hears people in here he's going to come around uh, this corner and he's going to rear up onto this wall over here now for this encounter even um, if you are not doing the encounter you guys are more than welcome to observe as you are already in here um, but i do ask that nobody except for the people that are doing the encounter try to approach boomy or try to touch boomy okay he um, is a super playful young male and because of that reason he can be dangerous because he doesn't realize how big he is right now so I'm going to show you guys exactly how you pet him and exactly how we can all have a fun and safe time um, and make sure Boomy is enjoying his time as well. Sounds good? Awesome. All right. Well, since he's not out yet, that means I gotta go get him. So this is Boomy. He's our giant ant eater. As Jordan said, he's very young. He's actually about average size right now. He will still continue to grow. Like he's actually the average size of like an adult fully grown ant eater right now, but he is still going to continue to grow for the next few months. His birthday is actually next month. He'll be two. Yeah. So, but so he's going to be a big boy. <laughs> they. I was saying earlier, he eats about six pounds of this like insect pellet we grind up a day and mix with water to have applesauce consistency. And also, if we find ant pellets, we will put it in his enclosure and he'll eat them that way as well. Like your, this looks like egg, boiled egg. Yes, he's yes. getting boiled yeah. eggs for, uh, that's his favorite treat by far. Uh, All right, guys, Boomy's having a real slow start this morning. Um, we did have some loud machinery here yesterday, which the giant anteaters are, are relatively um, sensitive to loud sounds, so sometimes it takes them a minute to get over that, even though that happened yesterday. Um, so we'll give him a second. But once he does come out, um, we'll just make sure everybody tries to be quiet, so that way if he is still a little bit nervous because of the construction noises, that we don't scare him. But um, he... <laughs> He's more interested in the holes he's digging down there right now than um, yeah. he hasn't done his morning rounds yet, so he's got to go double check that everything's the same as it was yesterday. Oh, okay. Come so, on, yeah, buddy. You, see walking yeah. up, he, you can see how he's walking on his knuckles, and he has those claws. 
Yeah. All right, guys. Now that Boomy is out and about, he will make his way over here and here in a second. Um, but it is super important that nobody approaches him um, unless you are one of the people with a tube full of eggs, okay? <laughs> I know he is so cute and he is a really sweet individual. However, they have extremely powerful claws, extremely powerful uh, forelimbs. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna hand out the eggs. And then um, before anybody goes to feed him, once he comes over, I'll give you guys just a quick demonstration. Come on, buddy. <laughs> a quick demonstration on how you actually feed him and pet him, and then um, he's all yours. Come on. I sound like you don't, I've never done this before. But come on, beautiful. Um, Boomy is also going to be in our um, theater show, so he will get access like all the other animals. Aww. And there we go. <laughs> so I'm not gonna feed him this, but I'm gonna show him real quick before he gets distracted again. You'll put this right up to his nose, and while he is currently eating, and only while he is currently eating, you can give him a scratch on the back of the head. Cool? cool. Go ahead and go for it. Don't want something most <laughs> encounters get to see, so. Yeah, eat or shower encounter? Yeah. <laughs> Your shower for sure. Is that what oh, you wanted? Look at him. Yeah. Just like oh, this. Oh, yeah. This is my bad. Like <laughs> so, giant anteaters um, do not have any teeth, and their tongues are coated in a super sticky saliva that is specifically designed to collect ants and termites. Um, basically, they do not have much. Um, many tools to groom themselves. That is why they have super coarse fur and um, they'll mostly just scratch like he's doing right now to, to clean out their fur. <laughs> you see that big old belly. Yeah, I know. So you guys can see their, his back feet, he's got like little bare feet essentially on those back feet. Don't drink that. I've never met an animal that would choose a fresh floor of water over a muddy puddle. I get it. No, but it's all right. Ah, we got the <laughs> Not the. All right, buddy. Is that enough? Are you ready to come out yet? Come on, Boomy. <laughs> Maybe. No. no. Change my mind. <laughs> half in, half out. <laughs> That's my nice over here. Um, do any of you guys have dogs? Yeah. Um, when you give your dog a bath, does he get zoomies like crazy yeah, afterwards? Yeah. Um, so does Boomy. So. He doesn't ever dig under the fence? No. I feel like the creepy guy with the van. Like, come on, we got eggs. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know it's it's um it's frustrating because I know he will enjoy the eggs. I just don't know why he is having a hard time getting out from under his uh, his deck today. I'm just like I'm just chilling. Yeah. 